Howdy, Possum Patty here, and it's a dark gray rainy day, but I've been inspired by some very lovely black-eyed Susans to do a floral page in my journal. So come on along. These coloring book pages are from this wonderful, wonderful nature coloring book that was gifted to me by Wanda from A Day in My World. And I love to use things that people gift me. And I've ripped out a couple of pages that I'm going to use for backgrounds in my Cosmic Smash book. So today I'm smashing coloring pages in. And from where I'm sitting, I can see these out way out by the front road. And they look so bright, cheerful today in this gray, rainy day. I have a cat sitting on my shoulder, so excuse me. And since every flower is just about the same, I did them off camera. But I just want to go over my coloring method with you, if you're not familiar with it. The first thing, oh wait, I am using Spectrum Noir professional alcohol markers. They are much cheaper than the Copics. They have two points, fat one and a skinny one. And it's really hard to see the markings on here. It's kind of like a black on black for one kind of tip. And the fat tip. I don't know if you can see that. But if you look at where this gray ring is, that's the fine point side. So I'm using the fine point to color. And I always pick a family of colors. So for these beautiful yellow Black Eyed Susans. Oh, cat's jumping off. I have a yellow two and four and five. One of these is the green. This one is the green. Sorry. Picked up the wrong one. There we go. Okay. Starting that over again, I have a 2, 4, and 5 yellow and a very light orange. And I'm using to color my very bright yellow Black Eyed Susans. So what I do when I color is I start with the lightest one. In this case, this is the number two. And I think about where I want all the darks to be. Looks like there's a petal right there. So a dark area would be like towards the center and underneath another petal. So this would be dark here. You have to test your paper first for these alcohol markers because if you want to use both sides of the paper, you do not want to use alcohol markers on some of these because they go right through the paper. Makes kind of an interesting pattern on the back side. But as long as they don't bleed out over the black lines and you don't want to use the other side, they're good to go. So darker towards the center, towards the tip, and darker underneath. Oh, and another thing is when they're wet, I don't know if you can see that. Sometimes you can see a little bit of the pattern from the other side of the paper, but that will not show once the alcohol marker color is dry. So you don't have to worry about that at all. It's okay to leave white spots. What you do not want to do is make a solid color of anything. If you want it to have dimension, 
So I come in from the top and I go out from the bottom. Sorry about all the noise. I have the noisiest washing machine ever. It's on drain right now. I'm doing this while I'm doing laundry. And Mr. Possum is down in the basement in his little workshop. And he's running a saw or something down there. Another thing about the alcohol markers is that they do stink. They are smelly if you're sensitive to some strong smells. Just use the watercolor markers. And stay away from these. All right, I'm gonna do these two flowers together. Cause this one's kind of small. Petal there. Going around and around. Oh, so, you know, when we go somewhere, Mr. Possum usually drives because he gets very bored if he's not driving. And I love to look out the window and I do my bird watching and I do my flower watching. I look at the ditch along the side of the road to see what's growing. All right, that was number two, so I'm going on to number four. Again, thinking always of the darkest areas. So I try to identify and remember where the wildflowers are. So we had gone down to the beach in Rhode Island a few times. It's not a bad drive, it's not that far. But we go through a state forest and through some other country roads to get there, so it's kind of a nice drive. And see this leaf is behind, so I'm gonna make it dark. I noticed a couple weeks ago that there were wild tiger lilies growing along the side of the road. And I love tiger lilies. I had some on my farm in Pennsylvania. I haven't planted any here yet. because I have a big problem with the critters eating my, my flowers. But I decided to stop and collect some little tiny bulb. They're called bulblets. It's really funny with the, um, this is what a tiger lily looks like here. This is the one I collected the bulbs from, the bulbles, they're called. And where the leaves come out from this, like this is the stem and where the leaf comes out like that, right in the crook between the stem and the leaf, right in that little space back there, you'll see these little black things, little tiny round black balls. And those are baby tiger lilies. Little bubbles, they're called. So I finally got Mr. Possum to stop one day to collect some, but most of them had already fallen off the plant, but I got a, a handful of them. And I was gonna put them in a little pot to have them grow. And I dropped them on the front porch. And I think some of them went under through the wood slats there to underneath the front porch. So I couldn't find them, but I had a couple left. So I planted them in some pots. So I'm gonna see if they grow. They're perennials, they come back year after year, but gotta get them started and hope that the deer and the other animals around don't eat them. So here are my tiny tiger lily bulbs that I picked off the plants. They grow in the axles of the leaves. And I'm just gonna place one in each pot. That's a little bit under the soil. Just gonna cover it up with just a little bit. 
And number three, I'm using my fingernails to dig. Okay. And I don't want them in the direct sun, I don't think. So I'm just gonna put them over here in the corner and give them some water. So that was one thing. I printed out the little picture of the tiger lily, which I love the tiger lilies. They're bright orange with black spots. So I don't know why they're tigers, because tigers have stripes. They should be, I don't know, leopard lilies. But anyway, they're called tiger lilies. And I've got a couple bubbles in a pot to see if they'll grow. And I'm going to put that picture on this page. Okay, went around and around with the number four. And I'm going to go now with the number five. Again, looking for the darker areas. So this would be dark under here. See how that makes that bright yellow pop? Put a little dark at the edge. Always feather, feather out. Okay, this one's gonna be darker because it's underneath. And then one day we got home from, not the beach, I think it was the store, grocery store. There's a butterfly bush we planted, which the deer haven't eaten, amazingly enough. Uh, in the driveway by where we parked the truck and I got out and I noticed a beautiful little hummingbird moth. Now if you think all moths fly only at night you are wrong. There are some moths that fly during the day. And the hummingbird or clear wing moth is one of them. And it's called the hummingbird because it kind of buzzes around the flowers with the wings flapping. It looks kind of like a little hummingbird in the way it flies around. like a little hummingbird and I love seeing them on the flowers so I want to journal about my hummingbird moth too so basically this page is just going to be about my Black Eyed Susans. And I put some in my flower press. I guess that's another video. So if you want to see how they came out from my flower press, you can watch that video. And my tiger lily that I planted my tiger lily bubbles. beautiful black-eyed Susans, I guess. That's it. It's pretty soon I won't have any flowers to journal about.
Okay, I'm going to move on to the next color, which is a orange number one. I just love the color of Black Eyed Susan's. So bright and sunny. And it's a perennial, comes back every year. Oh, except for the critters. And I did film this, but I never made a video out of it. Eight, oh, I don't know, like two thirds of my Black Eyed Susan bushes. I had way more last year. Well, until Tropical Storm, Easter, Easter, knocked them down. Now, last year, the Black Eyed Susans looked like this. And this year, most of them look like this, where they've been eaten. This one's starting to get a couple flowers. And you can see this one has been eaten. And this is a weed. And this I didn't have last year. But nobody's eaten it yet. It does have some flowers on it. It's a verbena. But this used to be a plant, and now it's a bunch of dead twigs. And this black eyed Susan is half eaten. It's the deer or the rabbits, not sure. And this black eyed Susan was eaten, but now it's coming back. I have a big weed over there I need to pull up. And this black eyed Susan was also eaten down to the ground. And this black eyed Susan was eaten down to the ground. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six black eyed Susans that were eaten down to the ground. And here's another one that's almost gone. And then you go back to the first one, which was number two. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I do want to do in here, too light in there. So you go back to number two, which is the lightest color and burnish. Or blend, blending, burnishing. Just take it and scrub it all on top of these. This is how you color with markers. Oh, it's a nut hatch. I love the little nut hatches. Oh, where was I? I looked up at my clock. I haven't been feeding the birds for two reasons this summer. I usually feed them all year round. But I guess there's a little songbird cold going around. And the DEP, DEEP, -E what they call it here in Connecticut, recommended that you put your feeders away for a while. So the birds don't all gather in one spot and make each other stick. And the other reason is uh, the bears, I guess, in the summertime. Or more, I think it's more in the spring, really. The bears go around looking for the bird feeders, get little snacks. Oh, there's so much food around here, though, for the bears to eat. Wild grapes and berries and all kinds of things. Okay, the center, I have three browns. And I start with the lightest one. And the center of the black-eyed Susan is... Kind of a lot of texture on it. 
So I kind of do this little pouncy, pounce, 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 dotty thing here. Making sure I fill in around the edge, though. Something like that. Pounce, 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 pounce. So I have not seen any bear since I moved here. There is a nature preserve down at the end of the street, which is not terribly large, but pretty big. And the people across the street do have like 100 acres. And the people behind us have a very large piece of property also. So there's lots of room for wild animals. And I'm thinking that uh, because they do have so much room, they don't really need to come by the houses to find food. But the bobcat does come by. A picture of him in my driveway. Go back in my orange for a second. There's a little piece down there. It should be dark. Okay, now for the darkest brown. Just put a little in the middle. And a little around the edge. I just really want to thank Wanda for this coloring book. The images are so beautiful and so fun. And then I'm going to cut this up. Well, I'm trying not to cut it too much, but I'm going to cut it down to size to fit into my Cosmic Smash book. And then I will be back to show you how it looks. Well, I took a lunch break with Mr. Possum, and I came back to glue these pages in. I was going to trim them down to the size and have a beautiful page. But, Mr. Possum just opened up a box of apple cider donuts. And he put them in a baggie to keep them fresh. And I took the top of the box and I was thinking, hmm, I'm looking out the window at my Black Eyed Susans. And I can put a window on the page. And if I do that... I only need to use one of these sheets because look at that perfect fit and I can do my journaling across the top and I could paint this like my window and that leaves me this sheet to use for something else hmm stay tuned Okay, I'm going to paint my window with some white acrylic paint and I might distress it a little bit with a little neutral gray. My window just soaked up three coats of acrylic paint and because of the plastic in the middle. I can't use the heat gun. So while I wait for each coat to dry, I've been working on my hummingbird moth. Now hummingbird moths are also called clear wing moths because, go ahead, say it, right, they have clear wings. So while the moth is still on this paper, I'm cutting out this part of the wing and I'm going to put probably some acetate or something for some from some other packaging on there then I'm going to color them in and then I'm going to put them on the page too after everything dries and I get it all put together I have both his wings cut out now much easier to do this now while it's still on the card because if I had cut them out and then tried to cut out the inside of the wings, 
uh, that would have been kind of difficult. I'm not a very good cutter, even with the knife. So I think I'm going to color them in and then cut them out. Now I think I'm going to color them in and then put the acetate on the back. Then cut them out. So now I'm going back to my window while my humming, hummingbird moth wings dry. And I'm taking a fan brush. And if you don't have a fan brush, you just take a regular brush and spread it apart like that and hold it with your finger. And I'm going to take some of this gray paint and I'm going to try to brush it lightly like this, make some wood grain. Don't want it too wet, kind of like a dry brush. I'm going to go this way. There's some texture on here from the three layers of acrylic paint. Wood grain isn't straight. So, kind of curve the brush a little bit. a little dark spot like it was birch wood. Faux birch frame. Window frame. Too much paint on the brush right there, but that's okay. Probably want to balance that out a little bit. Put a little bit darker spot over here. Okay, there we have that. Now I have to let this dry. I'm using my spatula knife to lift up one corner of the window before I glue it down. And I have this piece of acetate. I know it's gonna be hard for you to see that I cut off a piece of packaging. And I'm gonna glue it some pink on there, right? I'm going to glue it down inside there. Like that. And I'm going to put my moth on there after I cut them out. Okay, I put all the finishing touches on the page. I glued the frame down with the window over the Black Eyed Susans. 
Here's my hummingbird moth, and it's attached to that piece of acetate that I poked through the window over there. I put just a touch of glitter glue, and this is Elmer's glitter glue, on the wings. The wings are clear, but, you know, they're translucent. They got a little bit of a shine to them. And he just floats around there. If you kink the acetate, you could make him stand out more, but he's pretty heavy. And I did my journaling, August 2021, watching Ida's Rain. Good views of the black-eyed Susans out the window. Thinking about the hummingbird moth on the butterfly bush blooms. There's my journaling. And then here's my journaling about the tiger lily. And if you flip it over, it says, oops, sorry. This is the monster journal. August 2021, wild tiger lily stopped and picked the bubbles. This journal is very hard to manage. So there we have it, my window. My hummingbird moth, my tiger lily picture, and my journaling. So thanks for coming along with me today. Happy junk journaling. Bye-bye now.